welcome to uh, the course on metrology and measurements. So, today we will see the application of measured system, every application of the measurement including those not yet invented can be put in one of these three categories. One is monitoring of the process and operation, two control of the process and operation and three experimentally engineering analysis. So, within these three only all these measured system finds its application. What is monitoring of a process and operation? Uh, here the measured device is used for keep track of some quantities monitor. So, you keep for example, you keep on monitoring the temperature, you keep on monitoring the rainfall, you keep on monitoring the humidity. So, measure here the measuring device is used to keep track of some quantity. Certain applications of the measuring instrument may be characterized as having essentially a monitoring function. It can be temperature, it can be barometer pressure, water, gas, electric meter, automotive speedometer and fuel gauge and compass. So, all these things are used for monitoring the process and operation. For example, here this is monitoring, I was talking to you about a, a fuel. Today you can see beautiful things have come. So, see here it clearly says if, if the level is less than certain amount, so it gives you a red alert and then says it is moving towards empty. Okay. Here it says it is black and safe and what is this E and F. So, until you if you do not put the center image, if this image is not there, so this E and F does not make any sense. So, moment you have this center image made, then by looking at the, the symbol people understand okay, this looks like a petrol pump. So, the entire device is indicating the level of fuel present in the vehicle and what it does it only monitors how much it is getting sunk over a period of time. Today interestingly you have also digital displays from the mileage the, from the reduction in the fuel con, uh, fuel consumption it and the distance measured it tries to display the mileage for every liter or every whatever it is every graduation it tries to tell what is the mileage it has traveled and it tries to convert this uh, into for 1 liter what is the what is the distance traveled in this vehicle. So, this will try to talk about the process or the automobile when you have when you put in the other category of control of processes and operations. It is one of the most important class of measurement applications. Here sensor are used in feedback control systems, controlling of the process, right. So, how when do you control? You have uh, an experiment going on, you measure the uh, using sensors, you measure what is going on, these are measuring systems, get the output and then come back and correct the experiment such that you get a good output. Sensors are used in feedback, sensors are used in feedback control systems and many measure, uh, measurement systems themselves use feedback principles in their operation. Sensors are used in feedback systems and feedback systems are used in sensors. So, both can be used very important point. So, an instrument can serve as a component of control system to control any variable in the in the feedback control system it is first necessary to measure it. Every feedback control system will have at least one measuring device as a vital component. Then the signal control system may require information from many measuring instruments. So, a industrial machine and process control this is used in cement industry, sugar cane industry, sugar industry, aircraft control systems here also there are several sensors around the plane they look at all the conditions and then they try to control the system to get the output automotive control systems all these things are available today. So, when we talk about different control process and operations in terms of automobile you can see headlights uh, range chassis level sensor motor position uh, sensor differential non contact angular sensor combo sensor for steering throttle position for fuel flow HVAC sensor then steering uh, sensor, then fuel level sensor, wheel speed monitoring, mirror sensors, acceleration pedals and transmission systems. Today what has happened all these sensors are placed inside an automobile and then these sensors first measure the required quantity and then what they do is they try to control certain quantity 
to get the best mileage or a comfortable ride. So, here this is control of process and operation. So, if we want to talk little bit more of control of process and automation, let me uh, make a schematic diagram. So, we have this is the reference signal. input and then we have a control algorithm, then we have an actuation actuator, then we have a plant and we get the output. So, here try to this is nothing but feedback signal and so this is a control system okay and here is a feedback signal. So, if you see the control of a process, this is how it is reference input is given. So, here there is a error signal which is error signal which is generated and then this is taken to the control algorithm, control algorithm to the control algorithm does the modification or understands what is it, then it actuates. What is an actuator? Actuator is just a change of certain uh, variables or parameters which are involved. So, an actuator comes. So, these actuators uh, do the job after going through the control algorithm, then this is given information to the plant and plant starts working as per the uh, control algorithms uh, error signal whatever it is getting generated, it works and then it produces an output. Now, what we see is we, we take the output and then we take it as a feedback signal, give it to the sensor and then ask the sensor to understand what is going on and that is error signal is given. It, if you want to put it in crude terms, you have a error signal, there is a process which is going on, then the output is taken and then this output is brought back okay, and then it is compared then the error signal is given. So, accordingly the process is monitored. So, the output parameter, the output can be even a shaft which is machined, the product which comes out of a, a bread which is coming out of a, a bakery a microwave oven, pizza coming out of a, a oven, it can be there or a, a finger chips coming out. So, all are process. So, after the process is over, so the output comes. Now, the output is measured and then if there are corrections to be made, immediately it go, sends the output whatever is it, it measures the output and gives it back and then in the comparator it checks the value, then error signal, corrections made, so it keeps on continuing. So, this is a con this is generally the measured value is used to control the process. Engineering uh, experimental engineering analysis, in solving engineering problems two, gen uh, two general methods are available theoretical and experimental. Many problems require the application of both methods and theory and experiment should be thought of an as an complementary to each other. What we are trying to say is in engineering analysis, we do theory. Theory is we mathematically solve the problem, math mathematically we solve the problem or we do simulation and understand the process completely. After understanding the process, whatever we have understood, we execute it in the experiments and see whether it is coming. So, here this is the experimental engineering analysis where the application of measuring systems come in a big way. So, what are the features of a theoretical method? This is often, this often gives the result that are general use rather than a restricted application. It gives for example, you have speed, feed, depth of cut in a in a lathe machine, we know feed plays an important role followed by uh, maybe a depth of cut 
may then followed by cutting speed. So, this relationship is known I am just giving you an example this relationship is known. So, the magnitude of individual responses depends upon tool workpiece interaction right. So, the general use is given by the theory, but when I try to take the general use and tweak it to my requirements. Uh, so, then that is customization happening. So, features of theoretical method is a general understanding is given. So, for example, R A is directly proportion to V, F and D in a lathe machine. So, now you can eat it the theoretical one can even come out with a formula saying that this is first influence, this is the major influence, this is the second and this is a third. So, this general is given, but what value of V, what value of F and what value of D you have to choose such that you get a better RA that should come from the experiments. Invariable requires the application of simplified assumptions. See in manufacturing there are only three parameters, they are pressure, time and temperature, these are the three parameters. So, in, in pro, there are processes where only one is involved, there are processes where two thing two process variables are involved, there are where all the three is involved. When more than one pro, uh, variable is involved, the we do not know exactly what is the weightage of individual parameters. If we know the exact weightage, then we can quickly go do manufacturing modeling, process modeling of any process. But this is very a tricky a situation. So, what we generally do is we make lot of assumptions. So, this assumptions tries to generalize the model. So, moment we generalize what we get an output is a generic output. The theoretical predicted behavior is always different from the real time. So, generally suppose you try to take a material removal rate ok, this will be the theoretical response. Your experimental response can be something like this, this can be experimental response this can be theory. The why theory it is almost a straight line because you have made assumptions and the, the model is made in such a fashion such that it always leads you to the theoretical one. So, when we do in real time experiments there is always an error the theoretical prediction behavior is always different from a real time behavior as the simplified physical mathematical models because many a times to simplify the mod uh, the simplify the model and working of some manufacturing process we try to take uh, the variable relationship as linear. So, it is studied rather than the actual physical system. In some cases it may lead to complicated mathematical problems. So, for example, if we want to do a laser simulation laser welding or laser hole making similar process simulation it is extremely difficult why because you are supposed to take heat you are supposed first is heat you are supposed to take material property and you are also supposed to take a time dependent variable for this it is a very complicated process. So, in, in some cases it may lead to complicated mathematical modeling sometimes it requires only it requires only pen pencil computer etcetera, but extensive facilities it is not necessary uh, for theoretical one. So, the time no time delay in, in, uh, engendered in building modeling and assembly is all there. So, when we talk about features of experimental modeling it is often it often gives the results that apply only to a specific system that is what I said if you remember in the previous lecture empirical modeling ok. Emperor the specific system being tested however, the techniques can be dimensional analysis may allow some general generalization. So, but here what happens in the experiments the true behavior is realized. The accurate measurement measurements necessary to give a true picture uh, it the experiments are always expensive and uh, the device what you want it is uh, complicated in nature. Uh, so, it is considerable time is required for designing construction and debugging the apparatus before doing the final version of it. So, here is a instrument which is uh, here is a shaft which is a cam shaft you can see these are cams 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 it is a cam shaft cam shaft with uh, maybe 8 cams cams are always 
given for uh, a timer, uh, it, is, it is something like a timer, a timely release of fluid or whatever it is. So, it is there. So, here it all these cams are attached to a shaft or it is an integral part of a shaft. So, now what is happening you, you can see these are the uh, areas where it, it will be in contact, it will be in contact with the housing or some place. So, we are trying to measure the individual values of this. Okay, this is done on a CMO machine coordinate measuring machine and uh, here is a stylus, the stylus comes in contact with it. So, we try to get a digital display of the value at, at any given point of time. So, the elements of generalized measured system, it is desirable to describe both the operation and performance of measuring instrument and associated equipments in a generalized way without recourse of specific hardware. So, what we are trying to say here is whenever we try to give uh, requirements for, for developing a measuring system, we should try to make it very generic. So, it is desirable to describe both the operation that means to say rather than saying please give me that x instrument, you say that so here is a here is a part which is manufactured in which is manufactured and this undergoes these 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 operations and this is what is the criticality of this part in terms of performance. For this I would like to design or I would like to have I would need an instrument. So, it is very it, it clearly describes to the opponent person or the next person what instruments to pick. Okay, rather than exactly saying please give me that. So, it is describe it is desirable to describe both the operation, how the manufacturing and the performance of the measuring instrument and associated equipments in a generalized way rather than uh, specific. Here we focus on operations which can be described in terms of functional elements of an instrument or the instrument system. So, we should try to say here is an instrument which has to do this, 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 this measurement. We should not talk about what should be the shape, size, how does it look like all those things. We have to say what is the functions which, which should be there in the system and what should be the functions it should measure. By concentrating on these functions and various physical devices uh, and, and the various physical device av av available for accomplishing them, we develop our ability to synthesize new combination of instruments. For example, you can say a dial gauge is required or you say that here is a component which is something like this to measure. So, what I will do is I cannot measure the internal of these grooves and all. So, what I will do? I will try to say please give me a, a vernier, please give me a, a device where it can measure the radius. So, here what I am doing is I am trying to split into various functions and then I am trying to assimilate these functions, try to develop my own device for the requirement. So, when we talk about the elements of generalized measuring system, so it will be like this. So, you will have measuring quantity then you will have primary sense sensing element measure it and then what we have is we will have variable variable conversion element then we will try to have variable man manipulation manipulation on element and then we will have data acquisition data, data transmission okay and then what we do is data presentation system.
So, if you see here these are the different elements which are present in a generalized measuring system. So, first we will have a measuring quantity. So, we will have a primary sensor to measure and then this primary sensor elements whatever is there it then it is sent to a variable conver, uh, conversion element. So, we will try to convert some of the primary data into a secondary data. Then what we do is we try to take those conversion data variable manipulation of elements we try to do and then what we try to do is we try to have a data transmission system. This data transmission system communicates to a data storage uh, storage and then the, uh, the signal is further sent to data presentation system. It without going to the data storage it can directly come to the presentation or it can go to store. So, that means to say I am measuring a data then I am trying to convert that data and then trying to develop manipulation for the elements and then I am trying to record the uh, I am trying to take the final data in my hand and that data can be used for displacement uh, displaying uh, presentation systems directly. So, what are the primary elements? These are the elements that first receive energy from the measured media and produce an output depending in some, some way of the measured quantity. The output is some physical variable example it can be displacement and voltage. An instrument always extracts some energy from the measured media. The measured quantity is always disturbed by the art of measurement which makes a perfect measurement theoretically impossible. Good instruments are, de are designed to minimize the load effect. For example, this is a primary device, this is a primary sensing device. Okay. So, here is a fitting, so here is a connecting head, okay. this can be this is a, a, a protecting tube then a sensing, this can be an LVDT or this can be a sensor which is used for uh, for detecting gas whatever it is right. So, here if you see that, so this is a connecting head, connecting head, connecting head to a fitting. So, here this is a till this it will be an independent, this will be one part, part 1 and this will be part 2. And here depending upon this, uh, the sensitivity, these devices can be changed. For example, the protecting tube can be changed, the sensing element whatever it is there, this can be changed. So, that we try to get the uh, data more accurate. The variable conversion element, so I am trying to take individual block diagram and I am trying to tell primary variable, I am trying to talk about various block diagrams. It may be necessary to convert the output signal of the primary sensing element to another more suitable variable. So, instead of trying to take only displacement, I try to convert this into a voltage parameter. It has a function also to preserve the information content in the original form. So, it is always like the displacement you always convert it into, into a voltage signal. So, that this voltage can be used for very other measurements. So, variable conversion element if you see these are pressure inputs and you can see this is a supporting thing. Here is a coiled spring this when it tries to push this will uh, pointer will try to move. So, this is this displacement is converted into this motion. So, then the data presentation element if the information about the measured quantity is to be uh, is to be computerized or it is to be stored somewhere. So, then is to uh, human sense it is always there then this um, communicated to the human being for monitoring control and analysis process it must be put into a form of recognizable, but one of the element performs the translation function. So, the data presentation element tries to convert the data in and, uh, and helps us to uh, understand what is it. So, the data presentation element can be like a CRO which is there. For example, you had a circuit a power supply. So, the power supply had uh, and then this is attached to a machine. So, the power supply gave some data to the machine voltage it gave current it gave. So, voltage and current signals have been given. So, now what I do is I tried after the this thing uh, machine to measure the voltage same and then I voltage and current parameters to find out the load what is there or resistance what is the getting developed. So, then this signal I wanted to connect it to an oscilloscope CRO and see the displacement uh, to see that the data uh, presentation which is happening in a CRO. So, this is a it can be called as a TV or it can be a CRO 
which is used to see the displacement. So, primary, so first we saw primary, so then we saw var primary element system, then variable conversion system, I gave an example, then the data presentation happens in a CRO. So, in this lecture, so what all did we see? We saw various types of instruments, then the role of instruments in measurements, then what are the different types of applications of measurement and what are the different elements of a generalized measuring system. So, task for uh, students. So, let us take two tasks. First task is let us take a speedometer. Speedometer is, is a device which is used to measure the speed. Uh, which is used or we can call it as odometer, odo meter which is used in bikes. So, basically you will have a wheel which rotates at some rpm, okay, it rotates at some rpm and uh, this data is getting converted on the screen, you will see kilometers, you will see kilometers and then this in turn is linked with a mileage mileage uh, showing device or mileage device. Okay. So, again here it is a data. So, now what I want you, uh, you guys to uh, see is how is the data of rpm getting converted finally into a mileage data. So, here if you see we talk about distance. So, a single measured data is converted into some other data form and this data is used to find out the mileage and here you also need an input of fuel consumption. So, again here you have a device which is which is showing the fuel, fuel indicator. Okay. So, this data has also to be linked with this and you will have to get that data and here please understand it does it look for volume, does it look for distance that means to say height of the tank, what how does this fuel indicator measure the level of the fuel. So, please try to understand and now you see varying data points, you get varying measurements. So, for measuring individual uh, physical parameters, you have varying measurement devices. These devices will have varying units and they do single or that is primary or secondary data is taken and then it is processed and then you can see multiple sensors also getting linked. The next thing what I want you guys to look at it is, please look at uh, look at a medical device, biomedical device okay, where in which you can see in an oscilloscope or in a monitor you see the data which is getting displayed. This can be a temperature data, this can be the oxygen content data, this whatever it is, this can be your ECG data whatever it is. You see look at it. So, how are these see you have a human body from here you have different sensors all these sensors are pre processed or processed and then you get the data displayed and this data you can read as well as record this data for patient uh, to understand the patient history. Try to look at this real time application. So, here you will see patient is monitored through multiple sensors and these sensors whatever it is uh, the data is getting displayed and then this data is in turn recorded and retrieved when as and when it is required. Please try to look at these two examples what I have given here, how measurements are important, how different different measurement sensors are involved to get a different data for processing. Okay. So, with this we will come to an end of this lecture. Thank you.